There are a lot of good alternatives to Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro and even Adobe Audition. But there is one Adobe tool for which I wasn't getting a true replacement and that is After Effects. Even though there are some good options for compositing and post-production work, but when it comes to 2D motion design, there wasn't not much good alternatives available until now. And that is Cavalry, a tool that is primarily focused on 2D motion design. Cavalry is not just an alternative for After Effects, but it is actually better than After Effects when it comes to 2D motion design because it comes with lots of options and lots of effects that are already inbuilt in the tool. Uh, if you try to do same kind of effects in After Effects, you might have to install some external plugins or try to experiment with lots of effects and presets and also you may have to work with expressions. Also, there is an absolute free version of Cavalry available and there is also a paid version which comes with some more features. Okay, now let's check out the tool by creating a typography animation and throughout this video, I will be only using the free version of Cavalry. Okay, so we are inside the app and the overall interface looks somewhat similar to After Effects. So this is the viewpoint which is technically a composition, I mean the preview panel in After Effects. And this is the toolbar. All the tools uh, in Cavalry will be available over here. This is the attribution editor, which is like uh, the alternative of effects and controls panel. This is the assets panel, which is technically the project panel in After Effects. And this is the timeline. And here it's called the scene window. Here we also have an align panel and few extra panels for the Cavalry. Here are a few also some other options so these are major most of these options are actually paid okay so when you first open up the app it will by default create a new composition unlike in after effects you have to manually create a new composition and uh, you can even change the settings of this composition from this button over here again this also looks familiar somewhat similar to after effects and you can even get the settings from here as well composition settings and I would like to change the resolution to 1080 by 1080 a square resolution and let's keep the frame rate 25 and now I would add a background layer which is technically a solid layer uh, in After Effects but it is a bit different over here in Cavalry so to add it just click on this add button and type in background and here is the background shape and I will just right click or double click on it. Now the difference over here is when I change the composition settings, like if I change the resolution, maybe expand it or contract it, it will add the background shape will also just keep intact with the composition settings. Unlike in After Effects, you have to again manually adjust the background layer. But again, you can even get the option to manually adjust it. But by default, when you change the settings of the composition, it will change automatically with it. Okay, now let's start by creating a text. So this is the text tool. Let's click on it and let's click on this viewpoint and let's start by typing the text and let's select the text let's change the color so that it's different from the background color let's give it white and let's change the background color to black oh by the way when you select the background shape you may not see anything over here in the attribute panel now you can either double click on this layer or simply click and drag and drop it over here you will get all the options over here now so let's change the color to black and now let's select this text layer go to the shape and let's change the font style let's try out a different font style so i would like to give the font apparent and the style as black let's keep as as it is and let's scale it up so just move the cursor on the corner similar to after effects actually and just place it over here and with the align panel i can just adjust and properly align it with the composition window so in cavalry for a text layer or a background layer or even for shape layers 
if you're in the attribute panel, you will get an option called deformer and filters. If you click on this plus icon, here you can get lots of options. So you can try out each of these options and it will give different kind of effects uh, for that particular layer. And you can even get the options by right clicking on it and then again add deformer. Same with the filters as well. So now I will add a deformer named submesh. So now there is another layer added which is technically a deformer of this text layer. So we can actually organize it by clicking and dragging it and just moving it inside this layer. Now let's double click on submesh to just make it appear in the attribute panel. Now what submesh actually does is it actually releases each and every character or the word of this text layer. And now let's select this submesh property and let's uh, animate the position property. So here, if we move the cursor, you can see a diamond option over here. If we click on this diamond option, uh, there will be a keyframe that will be added here in the timeline. So let's place the playhead on the fifth frame and let's add a keyframe on the Y position. Now let's jump onto the 20th frame and let's add a keyframe on the Y position again. And on this previous frame, I will just move the text down like this. And now we have to move on to the graph editor. Yeah, we also have a graph editor over here, which is almost similar to After Effects. So this is the graph editor. By default, it will be a linear curve. But if we press and hold the Alt key and then just drag around the corner, we can get this Bezier handle. So I will just make a spike at this end and add an ease over here. I actually have a better idea over here. Now from this particular keyframe, let's jump on to next 20 frame again, or let's jump on to 40 frames and let's add a keyframe here again. Now let's move on to the graph editor. So I will just move this keyframe down. So I will just add a long ease over here. And you can see the graph editor is exactly similar to what we get in After Effects. And this is how it looks. Okay, so let's bring the work area end over here again. To bring the work area end, the shortcut key over here is N. And to move the work area start, the shortcut key is B, which is again similar to what we get in After Effects. And to zoom in and zoom out inside the timeline, you can use this bar. Okay, now inside the sub mesh uh, on the time offset, if we right click on it, we can get few more options like add behavior, add array, add math script, add unity. These are again few more uh, effects that and more options you get and to play with with that particular property. You can get these options with uh, other properties as well. If we just right click on the rotation property, you get similar kind of option. Now, you just have to try to play with those settings and try to uh, and just see what happens. So right now I will just uh, right click on the time offset and go to behavior. Let's add a behavior stagger. Let's double click on it. And here, let's give the minimum minus 15 and give the maximum zero. And if we play the animation, you can see now the overall animation is uh, happening in line, like uh, it's appearing word by word or maybe character by character. But the direction, I don't want this direction. I actually want first to appear create, then your, then own, like uh, from top to bottom. Again, we can change the direction from the graph over here. Just switch it from here. That's it. Now the direction we got is different. And from here in the sub mesh, let's change the level mode to word so that we don't get uh, animation from later to later. I mean, if you want that kind of effect, uh, that's completely okay. You get more options like line to line as well. 
Okay, now let's add some flavor to it. So overall thing looks very flat. Let's add some gradient colors. So for that, go to submesh again, then go to fill, check this button, replace the fill, and then here in color, I will right click on it, then add behavior, and the behavior I'm going to add over here is color blend. Now if we double click on the color blend, there is another behavior added over here in the attribute panel. Now here we have some gradient range. Now if we double click on one of the gradient, we can change the color and from here we can actually decrease the opacity of that particular color. So I will just start with 0% of opacity. Then at the end, it will be white. In between, I would like to add few more colors like let's double click on it and let's give it somewhere around blue or dark blue and just increase the opacity a little bit in between i would also like to add another color let's give it green And then I would like to add another color. Let's give it yellow. And then uh, I would like to animate the strength. So let's add a keyframe at the start and let's move the playhead and add a keyframe over here. So at the start, I would like to decrease the percentage to complete zero and let's uh, go to the graph editor and just add a slight is at the end and we got a nice gradient effect okay now on top of it if you want to add more effects you can do that of course you can play with the settings as i mentioned uh, from the deformer let's double click on the sub mesh so from here in the deformer inside the behavior from any of the properties if you right click on it and you can add behavior add and like this you can try to uh, add new settings and just apply effects and see what each of this effect does. So this is how you will be able to learn uh, more about the software rather than watching tutorials. For example, uh, if I go to deformer and let's add a deformer uh, named voxelize. Now let's double click over here to let's uh, to open it in a separate window in the attribution panel. Now we actually got a nice effect like a pixelated effect out of nowhere and the overall result is pretty nice so like this i would highly recommend you to uh, just go through each of these settings and and just try to apply behavior array math script or even unity and see what happens just play with the software and i will leave you with that by the way, if you want to learn the software in details, then um, they already have lots of uh, tutorials uh, they have provided on their official YouTube channel. I would highly recommend you to go check it out. And also they have some official documentation. I would highly recommend you to also check out the documentation. Uh, the, the documentations are actually pretty detailed. If you just check out, if you stuck with the software uh, anywhere, if you, you can actually refer to the documentation. I am 100% sure you will get the solution over there. Alright, so that is it for this video and I will see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.